So we uh we consider an example. Ah, uh, uh. So how about DII? DIIF is Ah, uh, dxi xi, right? Uh, uh, by our uh, definition, uh, this is true. Uh, but uh, for this dxi dxi, uh, because the xi appear twice, uh, uh, classically we write this in another way. We write this as dxi square. Uh, here we have the um. We have the parentheses, uh, parentheses uh, around xi, because the uh, otherwise the i and the power two here uh, will confuse us. Uh, so we need the parentheses. Uh, okay, uh, we need this, but this is not convenient. So uh, we, we we don't want this. Therefore, we switch the component uh, from super index to uh, sub index. So this can be write as, written as dxi square. Ah, so, uh, so in this step, we have switched uh, the indication of components from super index to sub index. Okay, uh, this is nothing but a convention. Uh, okay, uh, another example. How about diigf? So according to our definition, D D I G F is the uh, third order derivative. So D X I D X I D X G. Therefore, as before, we write this as D X I square D X G. Again, to avoid the uh, uh, parentheses, uh, to simplify the notation, we switch the Index, we switch the location of the index from super index to sub index. Therefore, this can be written as okay. So, this is the classical notation and our uh, simpler modern notation. Uh, this is modern notation, this are uh, modern notation. So uh, we can define the arbitrary order the derivative as we mentioned here previously. Uh, before we mentioned this arbitrary order uh, derivative. For each order, we have so many. For example, we have n k such a huge number of case order derivative. Uh, uh, therefore, the notation is complicated. But uh, fortunately, in many cases, uh, the Derivative uh, has nothing to do with order, uh, independent of order. So this is a very uh, interesting thing. So we will prove this later. Uh, uh, so I have a mark here. Uh, uh, in general, under very weak condition, uh, we have. Ah, so the first term, uh, the, the left hand side of this equality is first take a derivative which is back to xj, then xi. Well, the, the right hand side, first xi, then xj. The order switch, but the result uh, are equal uh, under very weak condition. Uh, so uh, we, we will do this now. Uh, so firstly, we consider we consider a uh, two variable function first. Ah, then we generate the result to uh, general n variable function. So for two variable functions, uh, we we don't write uh, x y two, uh, but we write uh, x y for the variables. Ah, okay. <clears throat> then we have this theory.
uh, if f is defined in an R neighborhood of A, uh, A is a point in R2 because uh, we, can, we now consider two valuable functions. So suppose f is defined in this ball uh, in near A, de defined in the neighborhood of A. Uh, suppose this function has second order derivatives. Uh, f, x, y and f, y, x. <clears throat> this means the, the second, these two second derivatives exist at every point of the R neighborhood of A, of our point A. So, uh, therefore we have the second derivative function. We have the second derivative function f, x, y, and f, y, x. Both of these are functions defined in an R neighborhood of A. Okay, we have these two second order uh, derivative functions. So if this is two second order derivative function are uh, uh, continuous at the center at A uh, with the component of A is x0, y0. Uh, so what's what we will get? Then fxya equals fyxa. Therefore, the, the second order derivative is independent of the order of uh, differentiation. Okay, you first x and then y equal first y and then x. Ah. So, or you can write this as x0, y0. This is a. Okay, so this is a very important uh, uh, theorem. Uh, so we, 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 uh, by this theorem, we don't need to uh, care about the order of differentiation. Oh, this is convenient. So now we prove this theorem. Uh, prove. Uh, F is a two variable function. Ah, uh, so this is x0, y0, this is uh, x0 plus k, y0 plus l, h, no, sorry. Um, so this point is x0 plus h, y0 plus k, uh, change. Okay, so we draw a rectangle um, so we consider from the uh, uh, a basic idea to study multivariable function is uh, uh, transform the problem into single variable function because we are we know many uh, results about single variable function okay. So we consider such simple variable function. Uh, phi defined from x0 minus r, x0 plus r. <clears throat> so the r, r neighborhood of this point A, r neighborhood of this point A is Maybe I use red. The R neighborhood is very large here. Okay, so uh, because F is defined in this R neighborhood, therefore uh, our phi here is defined in the neighborhood of x0. Uh, this function is given by phi x is f x y0 plus k minus f x y0. As you can check, uh, <clears throat> the point x y0 plus k and x y0, if x belongs to 
this open interval, then both of these two points uh, lies in the R neighborhood of our point A. Therefore, it makes sense to evaluate F at these two points and uh, take their difference. This is our function phi. Okay. And then we also consider another function P, uh, defined from y0 minus r, y0 plus r, real valued. Pcy is the value of f x0 plus h y minus f x0 y. Uh, so the definition of phi and p c involve the value of f at the four vertex point of this rectangle lies completely in the R neighborhood of A. So we define these two single variable functions, phi and C. So we consider their combination. Ah, we consider this quantity delta delta let delta to be the f x zero plus h y zero plus k minus f x zero plus h y zero then minus f x zero y zero plus k my plus f x zero y zero okay we consider this delta so you find that delta uh, this delta, you, you compare this delta with the definition of phi. Uh, the row, the first row, what's the first row? The first row is phi x0 plus h. The second row is phi x0. Uh, as you can compare uh, this delta which our phi given here, uh, which our phi given here, uh, compare this, uh, you will see that uh, you will see that uh, our delta, no, this delta is actually phi x0 plus h minus phi x0, okay? So, this phi is differentiable because uh, f has a second order uh, parcel derivatives, uh, therefore, uh, the first order derivative exists otherwise you could not take second order derivative so this f the part of derivative of, of f which is back to x exists therefore phi defined here uh, is differentiable okay and the derivative of phi is the part of derivative of f uh, so uh, we can apply the lagrange uh, mean value theorem to this phi to get this will be phi prime x0 plus theta 1 h uh, under the h so we, we apply the Lagrange theorem in the interval x0 x0 plus h to the function phi then there is an intermediate point this theta 1 is positive and less than 1 uh, uh, so uh, the difference of phi uh, the value of phi at the end point of this interval equals the derivative uh, in some intermediate point x0 plus theta 1 h uh, multiply the length of this interval which is h so this is the Lagrange theorem but uh, the, the derivative of phi can be computed using the partial derivative of f so this is the partial derivative of f x zero plus theta one h y zero plus k minus f x x zero plus theta one h y zero ah uh, this the, the this difference is the uh is the derivative of phi prime uh okay so and and uh, you don't forget this h now we consider the the term in the bracket. Uh, this is the value of uh, the difference of the value of the partial derivative f x uh, in two point. This two point has uh, 
the same first coordinate, but the second coordinate uh, are different. So we can apply, we, we can consider this function f x x zero plus theta one h. Let the second uh, let the second uh, um, uh, variable change. Uh, we obtain the function of the second variable y. So applying the Lagrange uh, theorem uh, to this to this function to this function in the interval y maybe I will leave some space in the interval y zero y zero plus k ah uh, so we can obtain here this will become the part the, the derivative of this function derivative of this function. Uh, it's the partial derivative of fx which is back to y. Therefore, it's fxy. So we obtain fxy x0 plus theta 1h and uh, the y0 plus theta 2k and uh, multiply a k. Uh, this is the difference here. Okay. But we also have an h there. Therefore, we multiply the h. So, uh, after apply twice the Lagrange mean value theorem for uh, for our phi and uh, for our fx for our this function, okay, we get delta equal the second order partial derivative of f first x and then y at this value at this value. Then uh, multiply k and h. In a similar consideration, you also have you can also obtain delta equal f y x x zero plus theta three h y zero plus theta four h h k. Ah, uh, in a, uh, you you can using the same argument to obtain the Another expression of this delta. Uh, our previous uh, argument is consider uh, this direction. F, the first row and then the second row. Therefore, delta is phi x zero plus h minus phi x zero. Ah, delta is here. Phi x zero plus h minus phi x zero. But you can also consider this uh, delta by Colon wise first the first column and second column. The first column is nothing. First column is nothing but P C Y zero plus K. Ah, uh, and the second column is P C Y zero. As you can compare this to the definition of our P C here. Okay, you made this comparison. You find that when you consider the delta column wise. Uh, delta can also be expressed as delta can also be expressed as to c y zero plus k minus to c y zero. Then just as we express that as a phi x zero plus h minus phi x zero, uh, we get this. Uh, uh, we eventually we will have from starting from this, starting from this expression. Starting from this expression of delta, you will eventually get a delta also can be expressed as uh, fyx at this point multiply hk. Okay, so uh, so uh, they are equal. Uh, the same delta has two expression. Therefore, we we consider uh, this. We conclude that f no fxy. X zero plus theta one h, y zero plus theta two k equals f y x, x zero plus theta three h, y zero plus theta four k. Okay. Ah, uh, uh, this uh this k h and h k cancel, then you get this equality. Okay. Now the proof almost finished. Uh, because we assume our assumption is that continuity of fxy and fyx 
at the point a x0 y0 this is our assumption ah so these two functions are continuous at the point a now so, so we can let let h and k goes to zero uh, what we, we obtained when h and k goes to zero by the continuity of f x y the the right hand side goes to f x y x zero y zero Well, the left hand side, sorry, the, the, yes, this is the left hand side. The right hand side goes to f, y, x, x, zero, y, zero. Therefore, they must be equal. So this proves our theorem. Ah, okay.